We measure omega-3 indexes in all of our patients, and the omega-3 index looks at the amount of EPA and DHA that's attached to your red blood cells for the two months prior to the test. And what we found is at a bare minimum to get a adequate omega-3 index, uh, you need about a, a thousand milligrams of DHA per day. And I tell my patients, look, I don't care particularly how you get that DHA, but I do care that you get about 1,000 milligrams because that'll get us an adequate omega-3 index. Now, why do you want an adequate omega-3 index? And I've written about this in all my books. If you look at people with their omega-3 index, people who have the highest omega-3 index as they age, have the biggest brains and the biggest areas of memory, the hippocampus. People who have the lowest omega-3 index have the literal most shrunken brains and the smallest areas of memory. And sadly, we see a number of well-meaning vegan patients, and I have a lot of vegan patients, who just have absolutely, you know, zero omega-3 indexes, despite the fact that they're downing flaxseed oil like, you know, like water, and they don't realize that we have a very poor system of converting short-chain uh, omega-3 fats into long-chain omega-3 fats like DHA. Uh, and we're not a fish, unfortunately. So, but it's easy to read the back of a label. Now, some of the Costco products have so little DHA that you'd have to consume, I'm exaggerating, 20 capsules a day. Some Costco products, have, you can consume four capsules a day and get an adequate level. Uh, a lot of people don't want to consume four, four capsules a day. And some of those are horse pills. I make, make a vegan uh, product that will get you little tiny guys uh, and it'll get you adequate DHA and EPA and DPA, but that's another subject. So when I start thinking about Costco, though, my head goes to quality. Like what other ingredients are in those supplements? It's one thing if you're getting your DHA up to that level on the omega-3 index, but like, how are you doing it? Are, are these farmed fish and they put all these other filler oils and and what do they well, use in the capsules? That... I, I, for, for me, I, I just, one sec here. I, for me, I'm concerned about all that, like a, a farm fish versus a wild fish versus what's in these as fillers and what's a capsule made out of. Like I, I'm figured and I'm guessing you take it to that same level. You care about all those steps and pieces. Right, but those, those products, for instance, at Costco are molecularly distilled. And one thing you can do is look for the USP label on a lot of the Costco products. And those have been third-party tested. For instance, all of Gundry MD products we send out to a third-party tester that we have no you know, relationship and say, hey, is what we say in here in there? And most of the quality companies, let's just put it that way, uh, send their products out for third-party testing so that what we say is in there is actually in there. And you know, if it's not in there, we're not going to sell it. All right. So let's leave the quality piece and come back to dosage because I think this is an area for me, I've struggled with this when it comes to fish oil for quite a while. And I like the way you put it with the thousand milligrams of DHA. It makes it really easy for people because you know, there's different dosages on the bottle and, and who knows who comes up with that. And, and if there are other fillers and stuff like that, I really like the simplicity of looking at DHA, making sure whatever dose you're taking, you're getting that thousand milligrams. But do you think about other pieces of that as well? Like the EPA? I'm not too worried about EPA. Um, I am far more worried about DHA because our brain is is about 70% fat. And interestingly enough, half of it is DHA. The other half, which surprises almost everybody, is that evil, nasty omega-6 fat arachidonic acid. Half of our brain's fat is arachidonic acid. 
And my goodness, if arachidonic acid was so bad for you and evil and inflammatory, then why the heck is half of our brain made from arachidonic acid? And why is it in Japanese studies that just like the levels of DHA are critically important for looking at brain health, the levels of arachidonic acid is also critically important for brain health. Uh, and we have, again, we have active enzyme steps to try and take short chain omega-3 and omega-6 fats and make them long chain omega-6 and omega-3 fats. And we're trying our darndest to get them up to arachidonic acid and DHA. Uh, we have those steps and we know that you know, two of the essential fatty acids are short-chain omega-3s, uh, alpha-linolenic acid, and short-chain omega-6, linoleic acid. Now, unfortunately, we've gotten that all screwed up in uh, how we're using various seed oils and how we feed our, our animals. But the fact remains, we have a very active enzyme system to try and get these things up to arachidonic acid and DHA, because that's what our brain is built from. And there's easy ways to get arachidonic acid. One of the easiest ways is egg yolks. Uh, another really easy way is shellfish. So if people are incorporating those on a regular basis as part of their diet, are they getting enough? Yeah, it looks like it. Um, there's no great simplistic ways for testing for arachidonic acid like there is for the omega-3 index. You can get serum arachidonic acid tests, the pro and you can get serum omega-3 um, DHA tests. The problem with serum tests is that basically tells you what you had to eat yesterday. And it's very unreliable. A lot of uh, companies will base their omega-3 index on serum levels rather than red blood cell levels. And that's, to me, a real disservice uh, to people who are interested in their health. How do you feel about cod liver oil? This has been one that's been in the health realm for a long time. I feel like it this doesn't have a lot of momentum behind it right now, but are you a fan? Yeah. Uh, in fact, I think one of the easiest ways, particularly uh, for families with kids, is to use a flavored cod liver oil uh, in salad dressings. The interesting thing about cod liver oil, uh, unlike when I was growing up, it was the nastiest, awfulest stuff that my parents had to hide in orange juice. Uh, current cod liver oil is uh, really... Um, flavorless. It does not have a fishy taste. And I've surprised dinner guests with serving them a salad dressing made with cod liver oil. And, you know, they're raving about this. Oh, this is delicious. You know, you know, what's, what's your secret? And I go, cod liver oil. And you go, Bleh. yeah, uh, what? So it's, it's actually a really easy way. And the nice thing about cod liver oil uh, even though on the back of, for instance, a brand that I recommend, Carlson's, and I have no relationship with them, it'll say a teaspoon is all you need to get the levels. It's usually a tablespoon. The other problem with cod liver oil is once you open it, you got to refrigerate it. It goes bad very quickly. And it goes rancid. Fish smell fishy because of the omega-3s going rancid. So uh, that, for a lot of my patients, is great for them, but then they start forgetting it. it. It's in the refrigerator, and it's not part of their regimen. And we'll have some really great results, and we'll be, you know, happy, happy. And then the next three months comes up, and their omega-3 index has fallen. And I'm going, uh, you know, what's the deal? Were you traveling? Blah, blah, blah. And they go, oh, that's right. Um, I've, you know, I forgot my cod liver oil. It's in the refrigerator. It's just not where I'm thinking about it. How good of a source of uh, DHA is cod liver? 
Is it something it's you want to overlap with your other fish oil or do you kind of go back and forth? No, boy, you can use cod liver oil. The, the downside of cod liver oil, which cod liver oil does have a lot of vitamin A and vitamin A is really good for us. Uh, interestingly enough, cod liver oil really got started um, or in the turn of the century, the previous century, as a, as a miracle cure for just about everything. In fact, I have several old medical textbooks that have huge chapters devoted to the miracle of cod liver oil. And uh, people would supplement with cod liver oil for uh, arthritis, for rheumatism, which was what it was called back then. Um, kids were supplemented with it for dental caries. There's some fascinating papers. And just as a fun aside, it turns out that snake oil uh, has huge amounts of long-chain omega-3 fats. And that uh, snake oil um, actually was really good for you. Now, unfortunately, snake oil salesmen uh, did not exactly sell snake oil. So uh, when people accuse me of being a snake oil salesman, I, I view that as a badge of honor because snake oil was full of omega-3 fats <laughs> how did snake oil salesmen i don't know if you know the history there how did it take on that bad association well they would put uh, other ingredients that had nothing to do with snakes um it's it's hard to kill a lot of snakes to get snake enough snake oil Got it's it. a lot easier to kill a lot of fish to get fish oil if you enjoyed that clip press here for the full episode i'll see you over there so what we're learning sadly is yeah you can have microscopic you know nano molecules of these things but because they never detach